Today we are making a delicious chicken gyro with every component being made from scratch. And the best part, they are restaurant quality for under 300 calories. Since we want the chicken to marinate as long as possible, that is what we are going to start with. In a bowl, on top of a scale, we are going to add fresh chopped parsley, vinegar, minced garlic, freshly squeezed lemon, Greek yogurt, yes, Greek yogurt for the marinade, I promise it will taste great, avocado oil, smoked paprika, salt, MSG, and pepper. We will whisk all of these ingredients together and put our bowl off to the side, onto our chicken. Today we are using chicken thighs, yes, chicken breast has less calories calories, but when I think chicken euro in Chicago, I think chicken thighs. The added flavor is worth the extra 30 to 40 calories in my opinion, and I think you will agree as well. Let's clean our chicken up. Many grocery stores leave unnecessary fat on the thigh, which are also unnecessary extra calories, so we are going to cut it off. Little bits like this, I will leave on, but something obvious like this, I will cut away. Try not to slice off any actual meat in the process. Once our chicken is ready, let's put it into our bowl of marinade and get our hands dirty. We really want to make sure that every crevice and square inch of chicken is covered with marinade for maximum flavor. Put some cling wrap or a lid on your bowl and throw it into the fridge. We want minimum one hour in the fridge, but 12 to 24 hours is preferred. Both options were extremely tasty during testing, but there was a good amount of extra flavor when it gets more time time to sit in the marinade. The local Greek restaurant I grew up with had the best I ever had, so I wanted to make sure this was on point. In a small bowl on top of a scale, let's add Greek yogurt, avocado oil, vinegar, garlic, dried dill, salt, and pepper. Oh, one more thing. What's tzatziki without cucumber? For this, we will cut off a 100 gram chunk of cucumber, cut that in half, and deseed it. By the time it is deseeded, it usually weighs around 80 grams. Then we'll shred the cucumber on a grater, put the shredded cucumber in a cheese cloth or paper towel and squeeze out as much water as possible. I usually end up with about 40 grams of cucumber when all is said and done and I add it to the bowl. Side note, you can peel the cucumber if you would like, but I prefer to keep the skin on. To me, it tasted the same either way and saved me a step in the process. Time is money. This is where I take matters into my own hands. If you have tried fat-free cheese on its own, you know it doesn't have much flavor. When I found out there was a fat-free feta, I was ecstatic, but I knew it needed some TLC to bring out all of its flavor. Through the testing process, I learned when you mix the feta into the tzatziki sauce and let it marinate, the flavor of the feta is brought out and enhances the tzatziki at the same damn time. Time. This is what I call a major win. We will add 42 grams of feta into our bowl and mix everything together. This is enough tzatziki for a little over four euros, but may not last that long because I can eat this stuff by the spoonful and the macros on it are quite incredible, so it's guilt free. Anyways, put cling wrap or a lid onto your bowl and put it into the fridge. If you like low calorie recipes like this one and want more of them, please hit that like button so I know to keep making them. Thank you. A gyro isn't a gyro without pitas. Luckily, I have a protein pita recipe that is absolute gas and takes very little time to make. Get a bowl on top of your scale and add flour, vital wheat gluten, oat fiber, salt, and baking powder. Mix the dry ingredients until well combined. Now, you can use the oil of your choice, but I like to use bacon fat I have left over from other recipes to add even more unique flavor to this pita. While the bacon fat is melting in the microwave, let's get our water ready. First, add the bacon to the bowl Bowl and mix it thoroughly into the dry ingredients. We aren't kneading this dough, so it's important the oil isn't all in one clump and will be spread throughout the pitas. Then add the water and use a spoon to mix everything together until nearly combined. We will use our hands to get all the remaining bits incorporated and then squeeze the dough a couple of times through our fingers to make sure there are no dry spots. Quickly form the dough into a ball, put into the bowl, cover with cling wrap, and let the dough relax for 20 to 30 minutes. This makes the pitas easier to roll out with the roll pin when it's time to do so. Once 30 minutes has passed, we'll take our dough and divide it into four equal parts and form those parts into little dough balls with one hand. Let's take our cast iron pan and put it on the stove top on medium heat. While that's heating up, we'll roll out our first pita. Put down some flour, put the dough ball on the counter, and add some more flour to the top of the ball. We'll start rolling it out, turning it 90 degrees after a few rolls to make sure we get a somewhat nice circle with our end product. Throughout this process, we will need to add a little more flour to the top 
top and the bottom of the pita so it doesn't stick to the counter or rolling pin. The goal is to get these pitas to be about 7 inches in diameter. Once the first pita is done, our cast iron should be preheated and we will add it to the pan and start rolling the second pita. After about 1-2 to two minutes, flip the pita to cook the other side. The second side usually cooks even faster. By the time the pita is cooked, the next pita should be rolled and ready to be added to the pan. We'll give the pan a quarter second spray of oil and add the next pita. Repeat this process until all of the pitas are cooked. Oh. Also, wet a paper towel to cover our pitas so they don't dry out. After each pita is cooked, put it under the paper towel. If the paper towel dries out in the middle of cooking, wet it again, squeeze out the extra liquid, and cover the pitas once again. At this point, we are ready to cook our chicken. To make things as fresh as possible, I like to take my chicken out of the fridge and preheat my oven right before I start cooking the pitas. That way, once the pitas are finished, the chicken is ready to go in the oven, and when the chicken comes out, the pitas are still warm. Grab a sheet pan, put some parts from paper and wire rack down and put our pieces of chicken on the wire rack. Now, you don't need a wire rack and can put them directly on the parchment, but I like the way the bottom of the chicken cooks so much more when it is raised off the pan. We'll slide the chicken into the oven and let it cook anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. I know this is a wide range, however, not only is every oven different, but also it will cook quicker if it is directly on the pan. This is where I highly recommend a food thermometer to make sure your chicken is cooked all the way through. I like my thigh cooked around 170 degrees, although they are technically cooked at 160 degrees. If you want to see the cooking tools I use, check out the links in the description below. While the chicken is cooking, the last thing we need to do is cut up our tomatoes and onions. I cut my tomatoes a little bit thicker while I cut my onion super thin. Once the chicken is done cooking, let's cut it up into bite-sized pieces. Now, it's time to build. Put a pita on a plate and heat it up for about 10 seconds. Put the plate on the scale and layer our chicken, tzatziki, sauce and extra feta for some added flavor. Then comes the tomato, onion, and a little parsley for some added pizzazz. We now have a chicken gyro that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any chicken gyro in the food world, but for half the calories. Now these chicken gyros will definitely help you lose weight, but you need an arsenal of meals ready to go so your diet never gets boring. If you want to see four meals that personally help me lose 10 pounds in just two weeks, click this video here and you will be well on your way to sustaining a diet for the rest of your life. Until next time. Deuces.